Hello, in this video we're going to look at testing all treatments against the control arm using Fullman's test. So the typical test would be are all these treatments equal to the control arm or are any of them different than the control arm? By using Fullman's test we get a test I have the setting are all these treatments equal to the control or as at least one of them better than the control. So they're one-sided tests in a sense, or ordered alternatives. And so let's set this up. So let's let X, I, J be independent, identically distributed, normal random variables with some mean mu i and a common variance. Where I denotes the treatment, so there's K treatments, and J is the sample size within each treatment. Okay, so the the test that we want to look at is H naught. So are all of them equal versus uh, H one minus H naught, where H one is at least one of these treatments is greater than or equal to the control. So I equals two to K. So we're going to let the first arm so uh, be the control. Now this is technically the hypothesis, or you could say this versus this with strict inequality in at least one arm. But when you say H1 minus H0, then we're, we're taking away the possibility that they all equal, meaning one of them has to be strictly greater than mu1. So this is the hypothesis setting that we're going to look at. Now first we want to develop an equivalent set of hypotheses. Let's let V be a vector of these mean differences. So you take the second one minus the first, the third minus the first, the kth minus the first. Then these hypotheses can be set up like this. You know, the null would be that the, mean, the vector V is zero, meaning all these means are the same, right? That's this setting. Then the alternative is h1 minus h0, where h1 is that this vector is greater than or equal to the zero vector. Then what this is saying, hey, at least one of these is positive, so th meaning mu2 is, is greater than or equal to mu1, or mu3 is greater than or equal to mu1, or mu k is greater than or equal to mu1. So it's equivalent to this setting. So this is the hypothesis that we want to test because then this fits into the test, the hypothesis test that Fullman's test can test. So here's a quick review on Fullman's test. So the mean, so these, this is aside from what we're testing here. So this is um, a new area. So the null is that the mean vector zero, and the alternative is h1 minus h0, where h1 is that the mean vector is greater than or equal to the zero vector. So this is sort of the general Fullman's test, and the test statistically, <laughs> statistically, the test statistic is generically, we reject h0 when our test statistic, which has to be in quadratic form, is greater than some constant. And this particular test is done at the two alpha level, and the sum of this uh, vector has to be, the sum of the components of x have to be positive. So a common setting is when we're testing the mean, we don't know the covariance structure. We can use Hotelling's t squared for this piece. And we test it at the two alpha level. And then the sum of the mean vectors has to be positive. And then this is shown to be an alpha level test with decent power. So now let's go back and develop the test that we want for our setting, where we're going to test V is equal to zero versus H1 minus H0, where H1 is the mean vector is greater than zero, or the, v, the vector V is greater than zero. So this is the <clears throat> all test, all treatments against one control. This is that setting. So let's let our data be multivariate normal with some mean and covariance uh, sigma squared i. So now what this what this vector is an observation. So the first component is from from the control arm, you know, treatment one, 
And every other observation here is from a treatment. That's what this represents. And then the mean, of course, mu, um, the, mu, the mean vector is mu1 is the mean from treatment 1, you know, all the way to mean from treatment k. We want to know, are, these, are any of these means bigger than mu1? That's, we're comparing all these treatments versus this. So let's let x bar be the sample mean vector. So this is, would, would be the sample mean from treatment 1, sample mean from treatment k. And we know that that is multivariate normal with the same mean vector and then the same covariance matrix divided by n. And then we develop a test statistic which is the, is the, the difference of the components. So the mean of treatment 2 minus the mean of treatment 1 all the way to mean of treatment k to the mean of treatment 1. So right, so these are the sample means. And so if any mean or any component here is highly positive or whatever that means, then that's evidence that that particular treatment is a lot better than the control. So now let's let C be this matrix here and then let W bar equal C times X bar. So then this, of course, like if you look at this, this would be, you know, if we take C times X bar, so that's treatment, you know, and you, and you do the, the, the matrix multiplication, this reproduces this right here, okay? And since a linear combination of normal random variables, it's itself normal, but this is one less dimension. So this is K dimension, this is K minus one dimension. So the mean of W bar is C times mu, the mean vector, and then um, then the, the variance is this, sigma squared over N, C times C transpose. And of course, C, C transpose, when you multiply this out, you're going to get twos down the diagonal, ones everywhere else. And again, it's a K by one by K by one vector. Now, under the no hypothesis that all the means are the same, then this mu vector, right, is saying all these means are the same. So then the, it's, it's multivariate normal with the mean zero and it has the same covariance structure. Then we know that a quadratic form of this Oh, I didn't write it, so I gotta write it down. So this is um, this is a chi squared with um, k minus one degrees of freedom. I don't know why I missed that. Didn't write that. So it's a central chi squared, and I actually have several videos on quadratic forms. I have a playlist called Quadratic Forms where we discuss this particular result. So next, we want to look at the standard deviations for a given treatment. So if we look at treatment I and calculate the sample variance, multiplied by n minus 1, that's the sample size, divide that by sigma, that's commonly known that it's a chi-squared with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now since each treatment is independent, if we sum these, then we get a, a chi-squared and we sum the degrees of freedom, so it's k times n minus 1, right? That's a fact. And then we're going to let this sigma squared, an estimate for our sigma squared, be this sum divided by, you know, the k times n minus 1. So this is an unbiased estimate using all the data of that common variance between all the treatment arms. Now, sigma squared is independent of W. So since we're in the normal setting, the sample means are independent of the sample variances. And so all of these are independent of all of those. So we have this chi-squared distribution is independent of this chi-squared distribution. And that becomes important because when we set up our test statistic, the ratio of chi-squared distributions 
course, divided by the respective degrees of freedom, is an F distribution. And that's what we're going for. So this, the test statistic for comparing treatments versus a control in the one-sided hypothesis testing area is this. So this is the chi-squared divided by its degrees of freedom, a k minus 1. And this is a chi-squared divided by the, its degrees of freedom. Now the degrees of freedom is kind of sucked into the, this right here, right? So if we took this divided by that, it's a chi-squared with k times n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So then we divide it by that k times n minus 1. But when we work that into this, then that becomes an unbiased estimate of the sample variance. So the sigma squareds cancel. This sigma squared, since it's divided by, can actually be taken into this inverse, um, the k minus 1. And so this becomes this, which is an F distribution with numerator degrees of freedom, denominator degrees of freedom. And it turns out that when this is too large, then that's evidence that those means are not the same. But to use the Fulman uh, test statistic or you know the criteria, we reject the null when this F test statistic is too big and the cutoff is a two alpha level cutoff, the same numerator and denominator degrees of freedom. And this uh, mean vector has, the components have to sum to a positive number, have to be greater than zero. Okay, And this is such an easy test to use and in a setting that is, I think, it can be quite useful. Well, the video is running a little long, so the next video I want to do is an R program illustrating these methods. And it's so easy to do, can be conducted in in most statistical software programs, I'm going to use R because that's the program that I tend to, to like. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.